This course builds upon Optics 261, which is a course that mentions interference a lot. So I want to make an early connection to interference as it applies to electric fields and connect the Optics 261 material to some Optics 262 material. So let's talk about some particular electromagnetic field oscillations that we might encounter. And I'm going to draw something specific here. I'm going to draw an oscillation up and down. And we're going to be imagining here that the electric field is oscillating up and down, like you've seen in another video tutorial with an animation. So this is oscillating up and down, and it has a maximum amplitude. This would be zero, this would be positive E naught, and this would be negative E naught. So it's oscillating up and down sinusoidally in time with those amplitudes. And let's suppose we add that field, that oscillation, to another oscillation, which is oscillating this way. It's got the same vertical amplitude but it's also got an equal horizontal amplitude. So it's oscillating like that to there, back and forth in time. And I'm going to conceptually notate that this second one might have some phase shift relative to the first one. So I'm going to multiply that times e to the i phi. So I now want to write down a more standard mathematical expression for this electric field, this sum of these two oscillations. So I'm going to call that the electric field, E vector, as a function of time. And as you've seen in, in interference and diffraction class, it's convenient to write oscillatory quantities as the real of some complex expression. So I'm going to put a big bracket here. And what am I going to put inside of that? Well, I've got my first oscillation, which is just an electric field E naught times oscillation in that direction. Let me assign those that some meaning. I'm going to write this direction as positive x hat and this direction as positive y hat. So that first oscillation is E naught y hat. My second oscillation is E naught times both x hat and y hat added together, a 45 degree angle. And then that term is multiplied by e to the i phi. And then this entire expression, representing the spatial description of these arrows, has to get some time dependence. And that is what we usually call e to the minus i omega t. And so all of that is inside of those brackets. So before we talk explicitly about irradiance, let's just do some of the manipulations that you're probably used to seeing on these complex numbers. So I'm specifically going to underscore the thing in this bracket here, and let's, let's try to just play with that complex expression and re-express it. So what's that equal to? I can group the x and y terms separately. So for x, I've got e naught e to the i phi times x hat. And for y, I've got e naught. This term gives me a 1. This term gives me an e to the i phi y hat. And then if I write this out a little more explicitly, I've still got e naught e to the i phi x hat. I'm just not going to rewrite that. But this term, I'm going to do a particular manipulation on this expression that you may have seen before. I'll keep the e naught over here. I'm going to factor out an e to the i phi over 2. And then if I write this term first, that becomes e to the i phi over 2, because I multiply these two together to get e to the i phi. And the 1 is e to the i phi over 2 times e to the minus i phi over 2, y hat. OK, and there's one more line of this to go. Again, no reason to change the first term. But the second term, e to the i phi over 2 remains. And then this combination of e to the i phi over 2s, you should recognize that as being equal to twice the cosine of phi over 2. 
And of course, sports fans, that's that cosine of phi over two is the essential ingredient that comes out of analyzing interference. We've now got some cosine factor, some cosine function of the phase delay between one term up here and the other. This initial phase delay is now manifesting itself here as this cosine. I am going to relabel this and call it the quantity E sub X, and I'm going to relabel this and relabel it as the quantity E sub Y, and I'm going to name a certain quantity E total, which notice doesn't have any time dependence, unlike my E of T up here. I don't have any time dependence for this guy. So that's just equal, E total is equal to EX, X hat plus EY, Y hat. Let's make sure we're clear to say that E as a function of time, this E up here, that's going to end up being equal to the real of E total, which doesn't depend on time, times E to the minus I omega T. So there I'm being explicit about my interactions of various variables. E total is a complex number. It's equal to these two complex numbers, EX and EY. You can see up here that they're both complex. They have arbitrary phases in them. And E over here, E of T, that is a real quantity, something we'd measure, and this is how you get it from these complex expressions. And I've broken out the time dependence. Now, what's the irradiance of some electric field like this? So let's make sure that's clear. This is a concept that you certainly encountered in your interference and diffraction class if you took it. So irradiance, which is in something like watts per meter squared, that's proportional to E of T times itself time averaged. You learned this, that the irradiance is proportional to the, something like the time average of the electric field squared. Just by going up here above, we can see that that's got to be equal to the time average of the real of this e tot e to the minus i omega t times the real of exactly the same thing now we get some magic which isn't really magic of course but we're not going to prove it right now and it turns out that this time average when you have this kind of time dependence, just e to the minus i omega t, in other words, sinusoidal oscillation of the electric fields, which is what we often encounter in Optics 262 if we're talking about monochromatic light, we will now make use of the fact that when you have dependences like this, this can be replaced by a very handy, much easier to evaluate expression. We no longer have to take the time average brackets. We no longer have to think about the time dependence because this is a theorem specific to sinusoidal time dependence, and it is just equal to one half of the real of E total dotted into E total complex conjugate. And let's be a little more explicit about that. It's equal to one half the real. We know that E tot is EX X hat plus EY Y hat, so this is going to be equal to EX dotted into EX complex conjugate plus EY dotted into EY complex conjugate. Four, this is what I wanted to let you to have you know about the relationship between the irradiance I of 
a sinusoidally varying electric field and how it relates to its components. Now that we've got these components from up above here, there's our definitions of them, we can now bring those things down. Since these are what's true for our case, we can now say, therefore, the irradiance for this particular beam is going to be proportional to one half the real. All right, let's do EX times EX complex conjugate. Well, EX times this complex conjugate is just E naught squared. And then E to the I phi times E to the minus I phi. Let's do the EY term. We're going to get, again, an E naught squared. We're going to get a uh, four from squaring the two. We're going to get a cosine squared of phi over two. All of those are real numbers from this expression. We're again going to have E to the I phi, in this case over two, times E to the minus I phi over two. We'll close that off. Write that out a little more ki with killing some terms. These go away, and you get, and now you get one half the real of e naught squared plus e naught squared times four cosine squared of phi over two. And this is the important final result here that there remains a term here, a cosine squared of phi over two, which is an interference term as we vary the phase difference between those two sources at the very beginning up here, as we vary them, how they phase relative to each other, we get a, a real intensity difference, an irradiance difference in our final measurement.